uh, actually the, the by far the the biggest thing absorbing my time is uh, engine production. Not not the design of the engine. The <laughs> I, I can't, I've often said prototypes are are easy. Production is hard. Um, so we have the most advanced rocket engine that's ever been designed. Um, the because I say currently the, the the best rocket engine ever is probably the RD one eighty or RD one seventy. Um, that that the Dora Russian engine basically, um, and um, and still it, I think an engine should only count if it's gotten something to orbit. Um, <laughs> so our engine has not gotten anything to orbit yet, um, but it is. It's the first engine that's actually better than than the the, the Russian RD engines, which are, were amazing design. So you're talking about Raptor engine. What makes it amazing? What what are the different aspects of it that make it like? What are yeah. you the most excited about uh, if the whole thing works in terms of uh, efficiency, all those kinds of things? Well, it's the Raptor is a a full flow uh, staged combustion. Um, engine and it's at, at, at operating at a very high uh, chamber pressure. So one of the key figures of merit, or perhaps the key, key figure of merit, is um, what is the chamber pressure at which the rocket engine can operate? That's the combustion chamber pressure. Um, so a Raptor is uh, designed to operate at uh, 300 bar, possibly maybe higher. That's 300 atmospheres. So. Um, the record right now for operational engine is the RD engine that I mentioned, the Russian RD, which is, I believe, around 267 uh, bar. Um, and the, the 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 difficulty of the chamber pressure is increases on a nonlinear basis. So 10% more chamber pressure is more like 50% uh, <laughs> more difficult. <laughs> um, but that that chamber pressure is that 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 is what allows you to get a very high uh, power density. For, uh, for the engine, um, so uh, enabling um, a, a very high uh, thrust to weight ratio um, and um, a very high specific impulse. So specific impulse is like a measure of the efficiency of a rocket engine. Or, um, it's, it's really the the the, uh, exhaust, the the effect of exhaust velocity of of the gas coming out of the engine. Um, so, uh, with a, with a very high chamber pressure, you can have um, a a compact engine that nonetheless has a high expansion ratio, which is the ratio between the uh, um, exit nozzle uh, and the uh, throat. So you, you know, engines got like you see a rocket engine's got like sort of like a like a hourglass shape. It's like a chamber, and then it necks down, and then there's a nozzle, and the ratio of the the, the exit diameter to the the throat uh, expansion ratio. So why is it such a hard engine to manufacture at scale? Uh, it's very complex. So a lot um, of com what does complexity mean here? There's a lot of components involved. There's a lot of a lot of components and a lot of uh, unique materials. That uh, so we had to invent a, a, a several alloys that don't exist in order to make this engine work. Um, so it's uh, a materials problem too. It's a materials problem, and um, in, in a st in a staged combustion, a full flow staged combustion, there are, there are many uh, feedback loops in the system. So, you, uh, basically, you've, you've got uh, propellant and 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 uh, hot gas flowing <laughs> um, to, simultaneously to so many different places on the engine, um, and uh, they they all have a recursive effect on each other. So you change one thing here; it has a recursive effect here. It changes something over there, and and it's 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 quite hard to control. Um, but like there's a reason no one's made this before. Um, but um, and the reason we're doing um, a stage combustion uh, full flow is, is because it it has the highest uh, the highest uh, theoretical possible uh, efficiency. Um, so. And in, in, in order to make a fully reusable rocket, um, which that, that's the really the holy grail uh, of orbital rocketry, um, you have to have 
everything's got to be the best. Uh, it's got to be the best engine, the best airframe, the best heat shield, um, extremely light uh, avionics, um, very, you know, very clever control mechanisms. Um, you've got to shed mass in, in, in any possible way that you can. Um, for example, we are instead of putting landing legs on the booster and ship, we are going to catch them with a tower to save the weight of the landing legs. Legs. So that's like, I mean, we're talking about catching the largest flying object ever made uh, with on a giant tower with with chopstick arms. It's like Karate Kid with yeah. the fly, but much bigger. <laughs> I mean, pulling something this like that. This probably won't work the first time. <laughs> uh, and, anyway, so this is bananas. This is banana stuff. So you mentioned that you doubt, well, not you doubt, but there, there's days or moments when you doubt that this is even possible. It's so difficult. The possible part is, well, at, at this point, <clears throat> We'll, I think we will, we'll get Starship to work. Um, um, there's a question of timing. How long will it take us to do this? Uh, how long will it take us to actually achieve uh, full and rapid reusability? Because um, it will take uh, probably many launches before we are able to have full and rapid reusability. Um, but I can say that that the physics pencils out. Like, the, like we're not... Uh, like at this point, I'd say we're confident that we, that like let's say we, I'm, I'm very confident su success is in the set of all possible outcomes. Mm, right. It's not <laughs> an for, all set. Of... <laughs> for, for, for for a while there, I was not convinced that success yeah. was in the set of possible outcomes, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is very important actually. <laughs> but so we were. Um, um, so it, you're it, saying it, there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance exactly. Right, cool. um, uh, just not sure how. How how long it will take? Uh, we have a very very talented team. They're working night and day to make it happen. Um, and, uh, and like like I said, the, the the critical thing to achieve for the revolution in space flight and for humanity to, to be a space faring civilization is to have a fully and rapidly reusable rocket orbital rocket. Um, there's not even been any orbital rocket that's been fully reusable ever, and this has always been the 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 the, the, the holy grail of rocketry um and uh many smart people very smart people uh, have tried to do this before and they've not succeeded so um because it's su such a hard problem what's your source of belief in situations like this when the engineering problem is so difficult there's a lot of experts many of whom you admire who have failed in the past yes and um a lot of people you know, the, a lot of experts, maybe journalists, all the kind of, you know, the public in general have a lot of doubt about whether it's possible. And you yourself know that uh, even if it's a non-null set, non-empty set of success, it's still unlikely or very difficult. Like, where do you go to, both personally, um, intellectually, as an engineer, as a team, like for source of strength needed to sort of persevere through this? and to uh, keep going with the project, take it to completion. A source of strength, hmm. I, I just really not how I think about things. Um, I mean, for me, it's simply this, this is something that is important to get done. Um, and we, we should just keep doing it um, or die trying. And I, I don't need a source of strength. So quitting is not even like um That's not it's not in my nature. Okay. And I I don't care about optimism or pessimism. Fuck that, we're gonna get it done. Gonna get it done.